Okay. Welcome to the Layman Seminary. This is a special presentation. Uh, this is Lacey. Y'all seen uh, Josh, his, uh, her husband, uh, from several other videos. And uh, so, Lacey, will you introduce yourself uh, for, uh, for the audience real quick? No? Yeah, um, my name is Lacey, and I've been friends with Charlie for going on seven years now, and um, I'm trying to help him out and be supportive with him to do these Bible studies since my husband is not home to do what he normally does with him. Does with him. I am kind of filling in that role, so we'll see how well I do with it. And uh, where's your husband? I don't know that I should say that. But you just online. say he's, a, he's on service. I mean, yeah. okay. All right. Yep. He's in the military. All right. He's so in the military. It's classified. So you can kind of fill in the blanks from there. Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, what we're going to be doing is uh, Lacey agreed to help me with uh, um, going through a passage that I'm going because we're have we're going to be doing a, a live feeds, of course, from the church, uh, and I'm going to teach on it, and I'm going to be about thirty minutes on Romans chapter five. I'm going to do the Sunday school lesson. But I told Lacey that, that we can do this deeper interactive idea. In other words, we're going to deal with whatever she wants to deal with in this passage. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, Lacey, will you praise in first? Yeah. Father, thank you for this opportunity to come with Charlie and just others that would be watching this to be able to just present your word, to talk about your word, to teach others your word. I ask that you just be with Charlie and I, that you just open our hearts and our minds and just give us the words that we need in order to reach others. Um, thank you for the day that you've given us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if y'all are ever interested in uh, joining us, um, I got Zoom now, which allows for us to have 100 people in here. So that's mm -hmm. an option. You know, we're mainly addressing that to our church, Janley Baptist. But uh, okay. So now I'm going to share my screen. And I think another one we could do, Charlie, that we have started doing with my work is um, Google Meets. Okay. Yeah, I'm willing to explore any. Cool. All right. So I'm I'm going to keep it in this mode here. I'm not going to go in full screen mode. Um. So basically, um, we use this book, right? As you know, and but what we always do, we always study the passage for ourselves. And uh, the lesson for the Sunday school thing was on the peace of God. I changed it to spiritual peace. And then I also, the subtitle I changed to implications for evangelism and discipleship. Okay? So you're seeing all that, right? You mean your slideshow? Yeah. You're seeing. Yeah. All right. Let me make sure. So yeah. right here. This is the evangelistic focus. Uh, and so I'm dividing up the, the lesson in the two main focuses, evangelistic focus and discipleship focus. Usually the Sunday school material is usually uh, evangelistic focus, okay? Um, it has a little bit of discipleship material, but I think it's how it, uh, it, people view the book of Romans differently and, and how I view the book uh, of Romans di is different than the authors. So... They want us to get the main idea of the lesson is all who accept the gospel find peace with God. Okay. Here are the divisions that um, they, they say there is justified. And what does justified mean, uh, Lacey? To be declared righteous. All right, good. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But so they're saying we're justified with benefits of Romans 5, 1 through 5. And we're justified through his death in five, six through eight. And then we're just, mm -hmm. and that justified equals reconciliation in five, nine through 11. And we're going to talk about those in a little bit more detail. So here we go. We're going to start walking through the text. Okay. All right. Lacey, will you please read that passage? Do you want me to read from my logos or do you want me to read from your PowerPoint? Uh, read from the PowerPoint. That's okay. why I'm, I designed it like this. And, and if we need logos, I have my logos right here okay therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ okay now the reason i highlighted the green is because it, you know how in our sunday school lesson it will have the black bolded uh, uh words 
You know what I'm talking about? Like when okay. you turn to a page, you'll see the black bolded words. See okay. Them? So yeah, that's I don't that's, use the I don't use the book that often, so I'm really not familiar with it. Right. So those are those are trigger words, okay? So okay. I'm all the words in green are the words that they talk about uh, that are bold in there, okay? Okay. So I'm doing it this way because of, uh, rather some, some Sunday school teachers, uh, I think we're more creative at our church in some ways, but some Sunday school teachers only read the book, right? Right. And even if you just use the book's material, you can make a PowerPoint like this and be more interactive and more creative. And you can right. color the word and that can be a trigger word. Right. So the reason the reason I had the word cover, colored is because we need to at least go over those things. But I want okay. you to I want you to go wild with this text, okay? Huh. So uh, Romans okay. five uh, one, do some observation on there. Tell me what you see. What do you think's going on here? Okay, so we'll just oh, break oh, it. Oh yeah, uh, let me let me limit you enough because I don't want you to go so much in detail. I want you to think okay. about the, the chart, you know, that I've, I've been, we've been teaching the girls, position, experience, ultimate, yeah. and thinking about how these relate to that. So, the okay. pew. Yeah. Well, explain that, that pew that you just did. What is that? So, I chuckle whenever I say that because it's Charlie comes over and he teaches our girls. So, one thing that Josh had said before he left to um, do his job for a very long time. He would asked that I make sure that I commit to doing Bible studies with the kids. But one thing that I struggled with is I homeschooled our girls for a little while um, before they went to public school. But our girls have a really hard time sometimes trying to distinguish mom and teacher. And so whenever I come in and I try to do something with them that is curriculum related, whether it be Bible study or it be schoolwork or it be something of that nature that's not my normal mom role, um, as far as like things that I do, like cooking dinner and, you know, those things, um, they tend to fight with me more on that and they don't really give me their best effort. Um, and I think they do that because they know how to wear me down. You know, their kids, they're smart. They know, they know my breaking points and <laughs> they're really good at pushing me to that because then I'm like, all right, I'm done. Tag you at Josh, <laughs> go do it. I can't anymore. Um, but obviously he's not here right now to do that with. And so I'd asked Charlie, I don't know if it was before Josh left or um, after he left, but we had talked about it together if he wouldn't come over and that would be something that he could do with the girls. The girls love their uncle Charlie. They, they respect him. They listen to him and they view him in that role. And I think that it allows them to learn more. It allows them to engage more. And so he's been through several different types of studies with the girls, but one of the, one of the things that he had just started doing with them, recently was this chart and just being able to break apart your position your experience and then the ultimate and then there are subcategories that go into each of those and like charlie asked i won't go in too much in depth with it because i feel like as we make more videos those things will start to make sense but so i don't overwhelm you i'll just keep it with those the position experience ultimate so in your chart you have a capital p a capital e and a capital u and the kids saw it, and I don't remember which one of the kids it was, or if it was just Charlie, but one of them went, oh, like, pew! And so now that's been like our little inside joke. So whenever we talk about position experience and ultimate, that's what our kids automatically do, and it's just kind of a little thing that we have. And it's, yeah, and it sounds like it a word of relief, like, pew, yeah, I'm not like, going to hell, you know, or pew, I'm glad I'm saved. You know, it's a relief. They don't have to yeah. worry about their salvation because they, they understand the chart. Them. Yeah. And they under, yeah. So okay. that's where that comes from. Cool. All right. Go ahead and do your observation and uh, think okay, about the chart as you're doing much. it. I don't want you to switch the slot on me. Okay, so if we're going to do Romans 5.1, if we're going to go through, are we breaking it down verse by verse? Yeah, that's why I have one slide for each thing. So okay, you, I got you. You just, so, uh, you just work with what you see right in front of you. It's already, it's already displayed for you. Okay, so verse one, it starts off with therefore. So anytime you see the therefores or the buts, the big buts of the Bible, you know, that our kids always laugh at that. But anytime you see 
the words like that. So therefore, but it's normally relating to whatever had just happened or in conjunction with, or because of this, this is now going to take place or that happened. So this is the result of that. And this is kind of where that's taking us. And so it's saying, therefore, having been justified by faith. Now, one thing that you need to realize whenever you're reading that, it's saying having been. So it's not saying that it's not like present. It's not in the exact moment. It's therefore having been justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, given how that is worded and where it is, how it's being said, that would go into position. So it is something that's already happened. It's past tense. It's going to go in the P category of our chart. Okay. And um, we're going to actually show the chart in a, yeah, in a little bit. So that that's, later. that's good. All right. And so the, the lesson, very good, Lacey. The lesson um, is saying that this is one of the first benefits of justification is that we have peace with God. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But like I said, I, the, I titled it Spiritual Peace. And what we're going to see is that there's two types of peace that are talked about in the Bible. Peace with God and the peace of God. Peace right. with God is positional and peace of God is experiential. Something yeah. you experience. So, all right, great. Next one. Okay, Romans 2. So through him also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. So this is leading off of what we just read in verse 1. So I'm going to use my Logos too, Charlie, since you're scrolling up on the slides, because I the font on the left-hand side of my screen is too small to be able to read it. So just so that I can read one and two together so I can understand it better, I'm going to read off my phone too. Okay. Not out loud, but I'm just letting you know that I'll do that over here because I can't read the other slides that you have on the side of the screen. Well, you don't need that. You just need the big, gigantic slide. That's it. I right. can't even make this go away. No, it's okay. You don't have to do that. You can leave it there. How's um, that? Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay, so through whom... Also, we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. So this is saying, this is obviously bouncing off of verse one, where we just said through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is who we have obtained our introduction by faith into grace, which we stand. So given the fact that it's saying that it's something that we're doing right now, it's not what we have done before, it would, in my opinion, go into experience. Which part will go through experience? So, oh, you want me to do it more like sentence or more like it would just, lines versus verse? Well, like, for example, see the green obtained our introduction. Okay. So you, do, you, are we, do you see that as position or experience? Obtained our introduction. That would be position. It's the equivalent of gained access in the, uh, the, um, the uh, Holman translation or the christian study bible so you say this position yeah okay why do you think it's position because um it's something that we're we've already we've already got it okay we've already and obtained it like we already have it it's not it's not something that i don't know how to explain it without going too much into like the past present and future because then you know i did that with you before well you, well, you can go in, you can like go confusion. into a little bit you can go into a little bit if you want I'm, I, like i said you got free reign just allow me to redirect you in, in case you start blowing people's minds you know <laughs> i don't think i'll do that but um one of the things that charlie had taught early on with our kids um with the chart method is trying to get them to realize that there's like past tense, present tense, and future tense. But one thing you have to be careful with that is there are so many things that can be past, present, and future. And there are a lot of things that can be in multiple columns depending on what it's actually talking about and what it's referring to. Yeah, the context. Um, and the context of it. So if we're going to do the green words obtained in our introduction, to me that would go, it's positional because it's something that you are, like you are obtained it's already happened. You're obtained in the introduction by faith, okay, into yeah. this place, which we stand. So 
um, what type of imagery is uh, behind this that you're thinking of? You know, what is what is used that happened in real life or that is pictured in the Bible to describe this idea that we've gained access to God's grace? Um, I don't there's, really know. There's a passage in Hebrews that puts it this way, and it basically says, therefore, we can approach the throne of grace with boldness. And if you remember, when Jesus Christ died, what happened to uh, the, the, the temple the curtain? It was, yeah. It was torn. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, yes. Okay, and, what, okay. and what did that torn veil represent? Well, at that moment, it was all over. We now have complete access. Right. And so it's possible that this obtained of introduction idea is that idea, you know. Okay. But also, like, when you talk about gaining access, you know, when you get give, given an access card, you know, you can think of some of these spy movies or whatever where a person steals someone else's access card. So you have the card, right, which right. means that you have the authority to go in or whatever. But right. you, every time you access that card, you go in. So this could be an example of how um, because we, we are, it's positional that – that we have access now we can use that card which is an experience so it right. can be related is, to that okay and then that's going to lead us right into the hope of the glory of god so yeah, that we, is where your experiences are going to come into place so that would go in the experience okay um so you think hope of the glory of god is experience why do you think hope of the glory of god is experience um i could be wrong but well, this is just an observation step. Remember, the chart right. is a is a is a way to analyze the text. You're not coming to conclusions yet, so that's right. Fine. And and I know that it may sound different for people viewing this for the first time, but if we ever make videos where we go into like major in depth with that chart, they will then see why it's so confusing and why you have to really pay attention to what you're reading. Um, to put it into what column because we could spend hours just talking about one column and why it could or could not go there. Um, right. It, I mean, it even goes as far as it could be unbelievers or it could be believers, which we're not going to go into that right now. But <laughs> so because we have obtained our introduction, because this is now, this has happened, this is already set in stone, the veil was torn, we now have direct access. Our experiences is going to is going to be the hope of the glory of God. So because this is taking place, it now transfers to let us have this. So now we, we have that hope of the glory of God. Right. I mean, it says we exalt, so that's present tense. Oh, but, I didn't read that part. My bad. Yes. No, no. It, it, so we, it sounds, it, that sounds like, yellow. yeah, that sounds experiential because it's talking about where we stand, but then the hope of the glory of God. What are, what, what are we hoping for? What is the Christian hope? And why does it say the glory of God? What's that about? Um, well, I mean, God's glory is his. Let me think of how I want to word this. So let me back up. So we Talk have about our hope first, and then that may help you unlock what glory may be. Okay. So we've already determined that obtained by our introduction, that's going to go into the position category, right? Okay. Yeah. So by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exalt in the hope of the glory of God. So, I mean, if you want to talk about what the hope would mean, it would just be the, the, I don't know how to put it into words. Okay. And what is it? What does a Christian? So your hope is like your, your, I don't want to say faith. I don't want to use the term faith, but you're, okay. um, you're not what willing the, lips, but like your assurance, like your hope, your, your, okay. what you rest in, what you, you know what I mean? What you have relied on, what you depend on your, this is what you, this is what you count on. If that makes sense. Yeah. It, you know, you bring but I don't want to use the term. I don't want to use the term what you have faith in. I don't really want to go down that road, but, but it, it's similar. It is similar. It is. Similar. It is. Yeah. It, the reason it's why simi I started with that, but I don't know that I really want to go down that specific. Well, 
let's let's talk about hope okay and i think i think your mind is right to think like faith especially since faith is mentioned in the text right. um but um there's two types of hope okay there's objective hope which in other words hope always has an object just like faith always has an object okay right and so that would focus on there's some kind of truth or some kind of event that's going to happen that represents the Christian hope. We're waiting for that. We're expecting that. We're confident that it's going to occur, but it hasn't happened yet. Right. Then there's the subjective aspect of the hope, which refers to our waiting, our trusting in it, our, our eagerness for it to occur. So one focuses on the object or the truth that we're hoping in, and the other one focuses on the experience or the application of that hope, living in light of that future hope. Right. So one of them is gearing more towards what's going to happen, what like our future uh, terms, like what this is what we want to happen, this is what we hope will happen. And then the other portion of it is, okay, this is happening right now. Due to this, this is what, this is it right now in the moment. Yeah. Um one way to think about it is let me ask you a question Lacey okay um and don't go too far but let's just keep it okay. uh, try to simple on this why are you a Christian Lacey why am I a Christian mm -hmm. um you, you asked me not to go to okay let me think just give your simple answer that comes to your mind I'll let you know if you go too far <laughs> okay um well, it really goes in hand with, I guess, it's kind of hard to answer why you're a Christian without giving part of your testimony, but the long and short of it, why I'm a Christian is because I believe in God. I believe in the Trinity. I believe that all of this had to come from somewhere, and it couldn't just have came from nowhere. Um, I am a Christian because I know that there's a God. I believe there's a God. Okay. So you believe the Bible is true? I believe the Bible is true. All right. Good. So what does a person have to believe in order to be saved? That Jesus is God. Okay. That he died on the cross for all of our sin. Not just okay. you, not just me, but everybody, even people that we don't like, which sometimes is not always easy to right. understand, but he did. Mm -hmm. And that he rose again and that he is coming back. Okay. Did you hear what you just said? He rose again. Yes. And that he's coming back. Yes. So you, that's a that's an aspect of hope, right? That's right. something we look forward to. Because we want them to. <laughs> right. In Colossians, it says this. It says, Christ in you, the hope and glory. So right. in that example, hope is because he's indwelling within us, even though it, we haven't got a glorified body yet, which happens It would be our ultimate. future tense. Yes. And so yeah. does that kind of help you understand what the hope could possibly be? Right. A reference to the future event or, or how we have trust in him now or exalt in him now because we know that that's going to happen. Right. And I knew, I knew how it, I knew how to interpret that. I didn't know really how to communicate that. Well, that's okay. Remember, one of the mission statements of the Layman Seminary is teaching Christians how to study and share their Bible with others. So, right. Um, Studying okay, is so what about well, not necessarily the easy part. Studying for me is easier than communicating it. Like Josh can communicate it very, very well. He's good at that. And so are you. I can study it pretty well. And I know that you've said it before. I mean, I can remember a lot of things. I can read something and remember almost word for word. I have a really hard time communicating it though. Well, yeah. And, and the thing is, is that all believers have the Holy Spirit, you know, and uh, um, God can reveal his truth or illuminate his truth is a better word for that. Uh, right. But the more that you're in his word and the more that you practice communicating it, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But some Christians, they feel inadequate and therefore they don't open their mouths. And so right. they don't go as deep as they should and they don't feel confident as they should. Because it's one thing to believe in a hope, but it's another thing whenever you're talking about that hope and sharing that hope with other people. Because it motivates you because you know that that hope can make a difference in their life. Yes. All right. So what about the glory of God part? It says hope of the glory of God. What is that a reference to, you think? Um, I would say his return. Okay. Why the word glory? Why is the word glory associated with his return? 
and what aspect of it would fit into the chart? Um, see, I don't know if it would go in position or if it would go in experience. Well, it can, it, it can could be, go in ultimate though, because if we're talking, if it is referring to his return, then it could go in ultimate. Yes. So yeah. it could go in a, I mean. Right. Cause I in ultimate you get a glorified body, right? Right. Right. So if, if this is what it's referring to, and again, this is what I said just a few moments ago, why that this can get tricky is because. <laughs> whenever you're reading, you have to make sure that you really are understanding what it's saying because it could be, it depending on what form of glory we're talking about is going to depend on what category it goes into. If I'm correct and it's talking about the glorified body, right. Christ and, is coming back, then it's going to go in ultimate. If I'm wrong, then it could go in positional. Right. But that, the, the whole purpose of doing observation is you're considering the possibilities. Right. And, and, you, and, right. It's, and it's helping you ask the right questions, you know, right. and then whenever you check commentaries or, or, or make your own summaries or whatever, you can decide about that. The reason I have 323 here, because in, in uh, Romans 323, it says, for all have sinned and fallen oh, short of the glory of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. So this may connect to that, you know, um, okay. so that's mentioned there. All right. So we're moving on. We're moving on. All right. The kids are coming out and getting apples, so just give me a okay. moment. All right. They're distracting me. Even though they just ate a whole ton of spaghetti and salad mm. and cupcakes, by the way, that they made at Mia's house. Mm. They talked her into doing a tea party and baking cupcakes today. Cool. <laughs> Molly, quickly, and then go back to do your movie. Do you need help getting that out of there? Yeah, but you need to make sure you get the door shut all the way. Push the first door shut and then push the second door shut. Hold on, she's got the drawer stuck. All right. While we're waiting for Lacey to come, you all could be reading at home and thinking about what observations you see in the text. Why do you think I have certain things highlighted and stuff like that? Huh? Uh, I was just addressing the audience. I was telling them what oh. they could do while you're you Oh, were, yeah, you were I forget away. that there's other people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oops. Five, three through four. Are we going one? Go ahead and read five, three through four. Okay. And not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. Okay. So, okay, um, exalt in our tribulations. Are we just going to focus on the green text as to what well, we, at, we, we at least have to focus on the green text. But like I said, you're free to go wherever you want. Okay. So, and not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations. So that is saying we're doing it now. Okay. I feel like that would go into experience. All right. Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance is something that you do. I would put that into experience also. Okay. And then perseverance, proven character. Hmm. I would have to say experience with that too. Okay. And then proven character would be hope. Um. I don't really know if hope would be positional experience. I'm going to say experience. Yeah, I, I think it's it is already too. proven character, which is transitioning into. It's not saying. It's not saying that you that you have hoped or that you will experience it, but it's saying that the perseverance is proven the character, and then proven character is now going to hope, and then so forth. So it's just leading. It's right. building off of one another. So I would say it would all go into experience. So the previous passage in verse two talked about the the hope of glory, right? And we talked about the, yes. the objective aspect and the subjective. This seems to be right. more the subjective idea because if you're right. if you're persevering, if you're if you're growing in your character, then this is going right. to give you hope. It's going to give you confidence, right? Um, because you're growing, you're 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 progressing, building off one another. Yeah, yeah. good. All right, I okay. think you knocked that one out the park. Hopefully, we'll okay. see. Okay. Let's keep going. Did you switch it to five? Yes. Okay, I see it now. 
Okay. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. It was given to us. It was given to us. My bad. Let me read it one more time. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So let's back up to the very first section. So, and hope does not disappoint because, so here we're going to go. This is why this is the result of, because the love of God has been, so not will be, not is being, has been poured out within our hearts. That is going to be positional. So okay. the love of God poured out would be positional. Okay. Through, and this is really important, through the Holy Spirit, which goes back to the Trinity, like I was talking about earlier. Father, yeah. Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? Because right. you can't have one without the other, and you can't have the other without the other. And you can't have any of them without the one. <laughs> right. Okay. So the love of God and then being poured out is going to go to positional. Um, yes, positional. Okay. Um, In our hearts, through the Holy Spirit, who is given to us. Do you want to categorize the Holy Spirit? Well, in what way is it referring to the Holy Spirit? So the love of God has been poured out through the Holy Spirit is given to us. Mm -hmm. when, when, well, when the Holy Spirit is given to us, is it salvation, which is, I mean, positional salvation. So this, could, this is a reference to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Right. So your position gives you the potential. Right. Uh, one thing I will mention is that this love of God, it can also be translated as love for God. For God. So yeah. that that objective and the subjective thing, that could be a play as well here. Um, so right. it could it could relate to experience uh, different and ways. And not positional, because it could be the love for God, which that would change it to positional. I mean, experience. If we if we stick with the love of God, that would make it still positional, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think either way you take it, 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 it it's still experiential. I, um, but I think you tie it back to hope, right? Because it's talking about this process, perseverance, character, and then leaning to hope. And the reason that, that you never get disappointed in this hope and you can be confident is because you have an unlimited flow of God's love, of his provision, of his empowerment that comes through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Right. So you never run out of resources if you rely on God. So it seems to right. be the idea there, which all relates to your experience. So your position gives you the potential, that the mm -hmm. reservoir that you tap into, if you will. Okay. I can see that. So I originally said positional, and you're saying it should be experiential. Well, okay. what part did you say was positional? The love of God. Has well, been poured out. Well, but I'm what it, what your no no that is positional because love of God has been poured out. Well, when was it poured out? It was poured Within out through Lord. the Holy Spirit the who Holy was Spirit. given to us, and that right. happened at the moment of salvation, which relates to the Experience. indwelling presence. Uh, okay, it relates to the indwelling. So what you see is this is what it's saying is the reason we this hope doesn't disappoint is because of what happened this positional truth happened that's uh -huh. an option um okay so not much difference in what you're saying you're okay. doing fine um okay five six for while we were still helpless at the right time christ died for the ungodly okay that would be experience because it says we're still helpless. We're still helpless. And okay. we're, yeah. But when is it, what, when is the text referring to right here? At the right time, Christ died for the uh, ungodly. Notice it said we were, we were. Well, this is before Christ died on the cross. So for a while we were still helpless. So while we were still I don't know the word you would want to use there. Um, well, think of the think of the subdivision on the chart: position in Adam and position in Christ. Right. So I'm trying to think. I don't want to say unsaved. I don't want to say unbeliever. I don't know that that would be the right term. No, it, it's okay. That's fine. We can in we can, Adam. Yeah, we can go into more de uh, detail about how those words are used later on. 
but yeah, okay. it's it's fine for you to use those terms. No problem. Okay. Okay. So for so while we were still helpless, so while we were still unsaved, uncleansed, unrighteous. Okay. At mm -hmm. the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. So now we're going into at the right time would be when he died on the cross. Right. So when he was crucified. Okay, I'll go ahead and mention this. It's, it's not so much of an issue right now since we're in Romans, but the word we refers to the original audience. Right. Because we are actually not there. It was written right. to them, but it's written for us. Right, right. So, so that's why that's why I said, um, like, I didn't know how to put it into words as far as, like, uncleansed or like in Adam because Adam was before us clearly mm -hmm. so that maybe I didn't word it correctly I don't well, know all unbelievers in my mind it sense. all unbelievers are in Adam yeah yeah so okay that's good all right okay seven for one will hardly die for a righteous man though perhaps for the good man Someone would dare to even die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. That's a lot. I'm going to read it one more time. Well, can people read this, though? Can yes, we're this? sharing the screen. Okay. That's what okay. I'm trying to say. Okay. okay. Well, this is my first time. You know how I am with technology. It's okay. Sorry. Okay. So, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare to even die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, this is a big verse, and this is a lot. Hmm. If we're going to do the first line, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, I believe that would be... Positional? Maybe? Well, well what, no, the, no. the four the is given explanation, right? Right. What, what this has to do with is this is sort of like what's called a, a timeless truth idea or an axiomatic. It's basically saying, generally speaking, people don't usually take the bullet for an evil person. They, right. they, they're willing to lay their life on the line for, for somebody that are a good person, yeah. Right. Saying hardly they would die. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep going. Okay. Um, though perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this goes back to what we were just talking about. Yes. I mean, kind of. It kind of goes back to, do I really want to go there? It kind of yeah. goes back to what we were doing because we were talking about in Adam. So this is saying that even though we were all unworthy, even though we were all undeserving, even though all of those things, he demonstrated how much love he had for us because he still did choose to die for us. Even right. though we were that unrighteous person, we were that not good person, he still chose to do it. So it's trying it's trying to convey that that's how much love he had for us. Right. You know, we would be like, I don't know, someone breaks into your house and steals all your things, and somebody comes up to try to defend you, you're not going to jump in front of the bad guy and take a bullet for him. You might get mad and shove him in front of the bullet. <laughs> I mean, maybe not, but I'm just saying, you wouldn't be yeah. like, oh, take me instead. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. But in this case, this is what it's trying to express is that we are so undeserving on a daily basis, mm -hmm. on an hourly basis, sometimes even a minute. Minutely, is that even a word? It is now. <laughs> it is now. It's minutely. It's, I made it. So, even though it's we fall short so many times, he right. was his love was so much that he did that for us. So that would be positional. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay, Hopefully. five nine. Maybe okay, five nine. Oh, it's on that side. I mean, over here. Nope, go this way because you'll get stuck on the curtain. Go around. It's right here. I'm in a video. I am doing a video. Okay, so much more than having now been justified, 
by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. You got it? Okay. So, having now been justified, here's positional. Okay. Do you agree with that? I do by for right blood. now. Yes. Because <laughs> I'll talk more about justification later on. But yeah, just keep going. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, because, well, yeah, because having now been justified. So now, well, if that's meaning, if that's meaning saved, and that's, now we're going to go to the ultimate category, depending on what the term justified means, right? Yeah, well, it, yes, and, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Don't go that far yet? Okay. Yeah, uh, focus on the second part. Let's talk about that. Maybe that will help shall open be things saved. Up. That one? We yeah. shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. So that's going to be your experience. Okay, explain to me what you, uh, how that relates to experience. Because this is saying we shall be saved from the wrath of God. So it hasn't happened yet. So, so this is going to be future. our present. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be, well, yeah, because <laughs> I know what you're doing. But the, like I said at the very beginning of the video, in the chart, the position experience ultimate, they can have present, past, present, and future in each, in that right. category. So right. experience and can be, but I still think that this would be experience. I don't think we're at ultimate yet. Okay. All right. So, your so, you, so the place where you should begin is when you see the will be language or the shall be language uh, right. in this type of writing is you should think about the ultimate category, okay? Yeah. Because the position's already been mentioned in verse 9. Right. Um, but but we're not there yet. Right. And so this is the thing. There's a near, there's a near immediate um, future and there's a far future. Right. Okay. Um, so, and if, so how how you view the type of salvation it's talking about uh, is affected by how do you view the wrath that it's talking about. So let's talk about the wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? You think here? What category does it fit in? What category does the wrath of God fit in? Mm -hmm. Um, positional. Okay. What do you mean by that? Maybe. Well, a lot of times the wrath of God is associated with position because we think when we believe the gospel, we're saved from the penalty of sin and right. people connect that with the wrath of God. But um, it could be the wrath of God, but but it could be in the ultimate category because we could be talking about his resurrection when he comes back. Okay, so, so his return. About saved from the yeah. wrath of God. So now he's returned, which then that would tie into the justification part, which then would make this whole thing go into the ultimate category. Well, because it mentions now having been justified in the previous verse, I think right. the, the future tense does not refer to the position. It refers to either ultimate um, or if you want to put it in experience and then talk about how the rapture, if you believe in the rapture, uh, is, an, is an experience that occurs that removes the person and then that allows for the person to have a glorified body and return back yeah. with Christ. So okay. that affects it as well. Another right. op another option is the wrath of God could be related to 70 AD. Some of the judgments that are coming upon Israel and stuff. Um, yeah. That's another option. But like I said, we're just thinking through this, okay? So wrath okay. of God can refer to temporal discipline. In other words, discipline by God in time as well. Right. Okay. Verse 10. Okay. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his wife. Okay. Okay. So what one do you want me to, hmm? Well, for sure the green, but you can talk about okay. anything reconciled. else. So reconciled would go... Look at your, look at your tenses. You should think of, you should think about, move from your tenses, all right? If it's past tense, put it in position, but then look at context and see if you really want to put it in position. Right, I know that's what I'm doing now. Because right. it, it almost makes you want to put it in positional, because it's saying, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled. Reconciled meaning it already happened. 
to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So I'm going to go with experience. No, no, I'm not. For, for what? Experience. What what are you putting in the experience column? I don't know if I want to put reconciled and experience or ultimate. Okay. But I'm um, going to say experience. All right. You're saying experience. And I think Maybe. there is practical reconciliation in this passage. But because he's using the we were, and previously we talked about how we were helpless. We were what? What was the other term that was used? Um... Hold on, let me go back. While we were yet sinners. So you have helpless, yet sinners. sinners and and then, Yeah, and so, and then, and then we were enemies. So it mm -hmm. seems to be describing a, a, our state in Adam. Our position. There's a, yeah, there's a, yeah, our position in Adam. It, it uh, um, in Ephesians 2, there's another passage that's very similar to this, um, where it emphasizes our lost condition before then. But, um, so the reconciliation occurs because of Christ's death on the cross. So that makes it sound right. like it's positional because it's associated with Christ's death, right? Right. Right. And then what about this? We shall be saved by his life. What is this? What we column? shall be saved by his life? Yeah. Shall and will are indicated that what? That would go into ultimate, I think. Okay, well then what does what kind of salvation are we talking about here? Save from what? Anytime you want to see the word save, we should ask save from what? From well, I don't know how you want me to put it into terms, but this will be our eternal security. This will be safe from But we're already eternally secure because of our position. Right, right. So, so this would be not going to hell. Well, that's another, that's another word for just saying we're uh, eternally secure. Well, that's positional. Then I don't know. Okay, well, earlier, this ties to the wrath. Look on this side. Go that way. So, we're, we're, we're looking at reconciliation here, right? I'm, I mean, the concept of reconciliation. And you're talking about the opposite of peace is war, right? And you're talking right. about how God is in conflict or was in conflict with mankind. And in this right. passage, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him, right? Right. And this seems to be saying the same thing. Right. Uh, and it's in parallel. So right. this seems to be referring to being saved from the wrath of God. Well, the wrath of God, right. according to what you said before, could refer to being saved from uh, when he comes back and destroys all his enemies. Um, right. And the church, if you're pre-trib, the church is removed before the tribulation occurs. Or right. it could refer to the temporal discipline upon the people at 70 AD or some other type of discipline. Um, okay. So those are some options, right? Yeah. All right. Um, and, and, if you, and if you can't narrow something down, that's okay, because this is the thing to understand. Even if you don't get the real intent of the passage, because you're doing this process, you've considered the, theo the theology of it, the doctrine of the passage. And, and uh, um, because what we're talking about, all the things that we're talking about are theologically true, even if that's not what this passage is emphasizing. Does that make sense? Okay. 511. Okay. And not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Ultimate. Okay, why do you say it's ultimate? Because now we have now received the reconciliation. So we have now... It's, it's tricky. I'm going right? back to the glory. I'm go well, well it this makes is, me think of what is said before... But, with God's glory. But I could be wrong. Well, well, all right, check this out. We have received, okay? That's past tense. And, and I'm not going into Greek right now or the perfect tense and all that stuff. But, but you're saying positional. Well, we have received is positional, yes. 
But because it's focusing on the now, it's trying to say, look, this was our position before Christ, and now this is our position in Christ. Right. And then we received that reconciliation when we believed in Christ. Right. So what happened is the way Colossians, I mean, not Colossians, 2 Corinthians 5 puts it, is God was in Christ reconciling the world uh, to us. And so the idea being is that what Christ did on the cross satisfied God. And because of that, he's been reconciled to humanity. However, each individual human has to make a choice to receive that. And therefore, right. they, they accept that reconciliation. But the, the experience is that we presently exalt in it. Okay? Okay. And like I said, if I was, if I was starting to teach the chart, I wouldn't have picked this passage because this passage is complex, you know? It is hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, still, I mean, it, people are going to see how helpful the chart is when we're having to wade through a more difficult passage. Right. All right. So let's let's review a little bit. Um, so one five one through five. This is from the uh, the lesson. Peace with God results from being declared just or righteous through faith in Jesus. Then God demonstrates His love to us through the sacrificial death of His Son. Okay, and then believers are saved through faith in Jesus, both now and forever. You see how they're all kind of focusing more on. How a right. person got saved and all that? Okay. So, uh, all right. This is called the great exchange, the divine transaction, or whatever. And in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it said, Although he knew no sin, talking about Jesus, he became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Right. So what happens is when we believe in Christ, we receive his righteousness because we're recognizing that he took the penalty of sin. It's, a, it's an exchange. Okay. Right. All right. So here's our chart. So tell me what you see on this chart, Lacey. I see position experience and ultimate. Okay. And then what's underneath <laughs> each one of them? You want me just to read it? Well, read it and talk about it. I want to make sure you understand the chart and that your audience understands the chart. Okay. Well, under position, you have... Um, have been saved from the penalty of sin. So this goes back to in the beginning whenever I said the past, present, and future. Um, but that's not always the best thing to try to remember by. But as of right now, because I'm learning this too, sometimes that is what helps me. Yeah, that should where, be where you begin. Yeah, definitely. So you have justification. Because the chart originally was called the three tenses of salvation. Mine. And... No. Okay. Okay, so positionally righteous in Christ. Um, your experience, so you are being saved from the power of sin. Not that you have been saved, you're being saved. And we're switching from the penalty of sin, now we're being saved from the power of sin, which is going to fall under sanctification. Um, that's going to be your righteous potential. So then with your ultimate category, it's going to be that you will be saved from the presence of sin. That's your glorification, the glorified God, the body, the, whenever it talks about the glory of God. Um, mm -hmm. That's the ultimate righteousness. Okay, good. All right. And what about this one? Well, this is pretty much what we just read. Um, you're going to go, it's more in depth with it. You have... You can be positionally justified, sanctified, and glorified. You can be experientially justified, sanctified, and glorified. And you can ultimately be justified, sanctified, and glorified. Um, uh -huh. You know, being declared positionally righteous and then being declared right and then being declared righteous in all three categories. Um, yeah, some people, when they talk about it's the... It's really the, not different than what we just read. You're just adding more subcategories to it. Well, yeah, well, what I'm showing is in the previous one, I just had justification, sanctification, and glorification. Right. Because that's what a, a, what a lot of people have been exposed to. They've also been exposed to penalty power and presence. Right. But when you study the scriptures, you find out that justification is used for all in three all columns. Them. Right. And context in determines how it's being used. Same thing with sanctification and glorification. Right. So then you see that the, the words underneath it explain that because we're declared positionally righteous in christ when we believe the gospel 
but also in our experience we're declared righteous, righteous. Uh, at some point and, and it gives us the potential to believe the gospel and then right. ultimately whenever we get our rewards everybody else will see us the well done and good and faithful servant idea so god right. is declaring us righteous at righteous. that moment in our reign yeah. and good so there it is there's the chart all right so now we're moving into a discipleship focus okay we've talked about this idea that there's two types of spiritual peace positional peace with god romans 5 1 and now we're going to talk about experiential peace to god philippians 4 3 so read Philippians, uh, it's not 4, 3, it's 4, 6, sorry. But read Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, so this is that idea that the Romans is talking about the peace with God, and this one's talking about the peace of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. So this is an experience this is conditioned upon doing these things. Right. All right. So I want you to see this. Um, in Romans 5, 1, we read that it said we have peace with God. But actually, okay. in, actually in the Greek, you have what are, what's called a texture variant. In other words, where the, where the Greek manuscript differs. Because you see this red word right here, this O? The things you and Joshua can read that I cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this O is an Omicron, okay? Okay. And this O down here is an Omega. Uh huh. The big and so, O. Little yeah. O. And so this little O and this big O, if you want to call it that way, right. it changes. So when it says we have peace with God, this is the indicative mood, meaning the portrayal reality. It's making a statement of fact in this particular right. context. But whenever it's the big O, rather than it being positional it's exhorting us to let us have peace with god in other words it's more of the peace of god idea you understand yeah, that more conditional yes and so it's an exhortation it's saying and so that can affect how we view the passage that we just looked at you know right all right so what we have going on here is in romans 5 1 justified is past tense haven't been justified and like i said i'm not going into the perfect tense and all that um it means declared righteous i said if it's an experiential righteous that is being declared righteous then it's not positional but experiential instead you understand that mm -hmm. okay romans 5 9 here's another passage we got to talk about much more than having now been justified by his blood charlie bean who's a free grace guy he wrote a book called Grace, Salvation, and Discipleship. And he divides up the chart into A truth and B truth. A truth is position, B truth is experience. And so he takes uh, verse 9 is positional. And then the save from wrath, he takes is referring to experience. Okay? Okay. So context, and based on the context of, of Romans 5 1, it can be either positional or experiential. And then this is what he says about the, the, wrath of, the wrath of God. We have to relate it to the wrath of God. We'll read this passage right here from 118 of Romans. For the wrath of God is revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppresses the truth of unrighteousness. So who it, suppresses the truth of unrighteousness. So it's talking about an experience that's occurring later on. And, you know, people have a different view of this and they think, oh, this is talking about unbelievers. Um, but the wrath of God and the, the righteous God is revealed at the same time. Um, but it all affects how, what do you think the wrath of God is? He's talking about hell. Is he talking about God's temporal judgment, discipline? Right. What's going on here? Right. All right. So we got to ask these questions when we see the word saved, uh, to save from what? Is it referring? So we come to, I have been saved. That's positionally. I am being saved. That's experientially. And I will be I will saved. Be saved. That's ultimate, right? right? Right. So, so let's talk about some implications for evangelism and discipleship. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go soon, Charlie, because yes, Molly's yes. This is the last. This is the last slide. Wearing bathing suits and changing her clothes. Okay. This is the. This is the last slide. Okay. So, if this is focused on evangelism, if he's mainly focused on position and stuff, why does? 
Paul go into so much detail about the other things that we mentioned on the chart? So we know, I mean, to prepare us, to um, give us the understanding that we need to help grow us, to help, um, I mean, we can't do it if we don't know it. Okay. But he tells you, but so whenever we evangelize, we don't necessarily have to tell them all that information, right? Right. Sorry. So it's like Paul gets us to overlearn these things. Why do you think he gets us to overlearn it? Like to know the, the details of this. Why is he going into so much information about what happened? Well, if you, if you know something a lot or if you overlearn it, like you just said, it's easier to teach it. Right. It um, makes you more confident. for your audience. You're yeah, comfortable it, with what you're doing. Right. And so that's one of the drawbacks that if we just focus on evangelism, when we study the Bible or when we talk to people, okay, are you saved or not? What we find is that people may not feel confident to evangelize because they haven't unpacked the gift of salvation by exploring all of its implications as it relates to eternal security and the chart. So the first thing we got to do is we got to learn the gospel and its implications, and then we got to share them. But if we're talking to somebody who's already saved or that we've already evangelized, we got to do follow up. And that's what the chart does. See, the world, the world, talking about unbelievers, they need to know two types of spiritual peace. They need to have peace with God. And then after they get saved, they need to know the peace of God. So let's right. offer them both. Yeah. So do you have any questions or comments? Uh, anything you want to say before we close out? Um, no, not at the moment. I think it's good that people will watch this Um it's a lot in one in one setting. It's a lot to go through. It's a hard passage to try to do the chart on. But like you said, if you um, it gives you that experience to really make you you know really make your gears and your brain start working to figure out where you want to put it and why it needs to go there versus having one that's pretty simple and you can just say oh it goes here, but not understanding the full potential of what you could do with it. Um, yeah. I think just giving people the time to watch it to try to learn it for themselves to just kind of go through it. Um, yeah. have them. Like I the said, I will only spend 30 minutes on it. And, and whenever I do it, I'll keep things more separate, like evangelistic focus, discipleship right. focus. But I wanted right. people to see how you interacted with the text in this one. So yeah. thanks a lot, Lacey. Um, it was a blessing to me. And I know it'll be a blessing to the hearers. And so um, I asked the people out there that if this was a blessing to you, Subscribe, hit the bell if you want notifications, share this with others. Um, if you want to donate, there's options to do that underneath the link, I think. Um, and uh, keep this ministry in prayer. Amen. God bless. Stop and sharing.